All right, all right, all right, everybody. How are you doing? Welcome in. It's Mikey White here, aka Gun and Money Works. Kind of stumbled across that, didn't I? That was, that was stupid, but uh, I don't know. A little tired today. We're doing good. How is everybody? Uh, welcome in. Uh, we're part nine. Is it part nine? Yeah, part nine of the uh, Quidlin Row and uh, Max Betterway diorama. Uh, I've got most of the principal paint done and decals. Flat coats. I've got a few little details I got to do on the Max Batteroy, like uh, just minor hand painting stuff. Super easy. We'll go over that tonight too. Maybe get uh, into that a little bit. Let's let's see here. I got anything going on? Nope, nobody on yet. Uh, so anyway, before we get started, let's do the intro. We'll get going. Let's get this show. Going. So, uh, like I was saying just a minute ago, I got all the principal paint done, just some minor little touch-ups and a, and a few little hand-painted details, like uh, on the arms and, and, the, and the legs, just really minor stuff. There was a couple of lights, that little light pieces that are supposed to go into the arm and the, one, and the back of the leg, something like that. Nothing big. Um, so, I'm getting ready to start the, uh, the cell shading process tonight. I was hoping to be at this stage when I got here, but it's sometimes kind of hard to tell on the weekends where I'm going to be by uh, by Wednesday. So I, that's why it took me a little while too. What's up, George? George's in the house. No one's on here. Yeah, that's right. You're the only one in so far. I've got two watchers. And you're one of them. Welcome in, dude. So uh, I've been experimenting. I've been looking at cells. I, I took a lot of pictures. I brought the movie back up, and I took a bunch of photos, of, you know, screenshots, of the movie and um, I'm trying to, to to see if I have the right colored pens to do this kit. Now I, I kind of like the gray on the white as for shadowing, you know, with especially like the when I practice on the Gundam kit. Um, but if you look at the cells, I'll show this uh, the cells a little bit uh, uh, in a minute here, and it actually looks like a brown color. So I did a little bit of an experiment with with a dark brown that I have. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure I like it. I don't know if I'm gonna, if I'm trying to match the the anime, the, the actual movie cell uh, identically. I'm going to have to use the brown. But the other problem is is that some of the other shadows are kind of a lighter color. I don't have a a, a bunch of different shades of brown. So, but I do have the gray, and the gray works well in black, and that works well on the white. So, I may end up doing that. So, anyway, what's up? Hey, Nick. Nick's in the house. How you doing? Geo's here. That's right. We got two, two in the chat. How's, how's everybody's Wednesday going so far? It uh, looks like George is awake. He said he wasn't sure he'd be awake for my show tonight, but it looks like he made it in. So I'm going to go down to the bench here, <coughs> and I've got all the parts laid out. Uh, and all the blue that you see on this kit is painted. I did not use any of the decals, um, and I will prove that right here. Here's all the... All the blue portions, and even the wing tips here on the little uh, fins in the back, those are all done in, done with paint. Um, I did use the black decals for the striping, and I actually made a mistake. I uh, had to correct it, and but that's part of the process, right? And I did use the black here, and these logos and stuff for the wings as well. Um, when I was reading the instructions, it shows a picture of a leg, and it, you know how you have a decal that's on either side. So it'll say, you know, give you one number, and then the other one in parentheses is supposed to be for the opposite side. I misinterpreted the inside and outside leg because the inside, the holes here, these little vents, are actually in different heights inside and out. So the stripe is different. And at first, I thought the Hasegawa screwed up on their decals, but what had happened was I put the wrong one on one side. I, I put the first one on correct, and then when I went to do the other side of that same leg, or actually I did, I started the other, the inside of the other leg, I ended up using the decal that should have gone on the outs. Anyway, I had to cut one down. I had to extend another one. I had to do some little bit of painting. Uh, you can't tell. You can't tell that there's actually a repair done on these, but yeah, I actually had to 
to do some painting on, on one of the tops here and then fill in a spot down below because one one was too short. Basically what happened was is that this hole for the, the, the blue spot was in a different position, you know, if I lined up this vent at the top. Can you sell shade and paint so that it looks good, maybe 100%? Okay, wait, let me put this up on screen. Sorry, George, I didn't get your question here. I was just talking away. Can you sell shade and paint so it looks good but may not be 100% accurate? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's what I'm going to probably end up doing. I, I started on the body here, and I, you can't see it now. When I zoom in, I'll show you guys uh, what I've done. I started just on a, on a couple of pieces here. I've got the feet uh, glued together uh, in standing position because there's no sense having them in any other position. So I just glued these two, the heels on, and those will, will insert the But one of the things I was trying to do was keep the part separation and do a lot of the cell shading before I assemble it. Because I noticed when I was trying to do this on a, an assembled Gundam kit, it, it was really hard to get into some of those deeper crevices because the all the parts were, were together. It's probably going to be easier for me to focus on like how, what the pose is going to be, where the shadows are going to be, and shade those pieces accordingly, and then put it together. Like like oh, here, I'll zoom in here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we'll go down a close up. So here's the here's the chest piece, and then on the sides, this is gray, was gray, but I added a lot of black for for the shadowing on on either side, and, and it's a little bit different on each side. It's not going to be the same shadow, so that's why I did that that way. So then, as this piece comes in the back, this is the the back portion, and you can see I've used some gray there for the shadow because when you put this together, now you've got those shadows underneath. And there would be no way for me to get all the, that color separation on those pieces uh, as close together without, you know, these pins aren't that that fine tip. It's just really hard. What's up, Julius? Um, so it was easier to, to, to do some of the shading first and then assemble the two pieces. Even on the side here, you can see I got a little bit of shadow because the, the arms, the shoulders are going to go in here. So there's going to be some shadows there. And I may even add a little bit more black just to kind of darken that up. Um, but here, let me let me bring up the cells, and I'll show you uh, what I was talking about when it comes to the to the gray, uh, gray versus brown. So the best example is probably one of these two. Uh, let's see, yeah, these one of these two. So here's a screenshot. This was taken right off my TV. Um, and well that one sort of but this one here okay you see the shadowing on the arms it almost looks like whoever was filling in the shadows on the cells when they were drawing this it's like they did it in a light brown and then maybe thought no it's too light and then went darker and went over it with a darker brown so that's my challenge do i use brown or do i try to do this in just gray and black i think gray and black is going to look great um especially on the the uh these uh you know the the micro missile pods those are going to be done in just black um and then i do also have a darker blue already that i used on the quailin road that i can use for shadowing any of the blue like the crest on the on the chest piece here and the legs and the and the little uh tiny fins here on the on the side so so here, here's an example of the brown. I actually did it in a spot that you can't see. So I was trying to just see, right, come on, focus. I was trying to see if this brown would work. Uh, and it does look okay, but the ink doesn't saturate. It seems like the, the paint on the in the pen doesn't completely saturate. It's a little opaque, so some of that white is coming through. And the gray, kind I guess, kind of did the same thing too, but... Uh, especially with the fine tip pen, I had to really shake it and mix it up well. But uh, I think that, you know, I think in the long run, the gray is probably going to look better. And plus, I don't have the fine tip pens in the, in the brown colors. I'm going to have to, I'd have to order those if I was going to do that. But one of the things I am really stoked about, and I'm just going to put these in a clip here, is I took one of these orange pens. This is like a 
I don't even know what color this is, but it's it's kind of like a peach color. And I tried an orange one, and it was a little too similar to the the color that it, uh, of the lens. But I wanted to do some lens glare, and I sent the guys at the amp, in the amp fan a, a picture of this. But so I think uh, I think the lens glare came out really well with that that orange color. So now I went right across those glass pieces there and just put some glare on those those lenses. <laughs> What's up, G1? How you doing? <laughs> so I really like the way these came out. Background lighting in the anime could make it look brown. Oh, yeah, that's true. But your room with red... Uh, but in your room with red lights, brown could be less good. Yeah, I think you're right, George. So I think I'm going to stick with the gray. And I wish I had actually two tones of gray, which I don't. I just have the one. But I can supplement that with some black, which is what I did on the, the Gundam kit that I practiced on. And it really does look good if done right. I think this looks pretty good, too, with these two pieces together and all this shadowing back here i may add some black under here now this further up in here you don't you won't see that once you get the cockpit this uh canopy portion shoved in here and i can pop this in real quick so you can see one of the interesting things about this kit is that this canopy piece actually has a hinge so it does bend you can actually bend the torso slightly and that's built into the design. And I was wondering when I was assembling this, going, why is there polycaps hooked to these little brackets in here that this thing connects to? But that's that's the reason for it. It's a little bit more opposability. You can see that that moves. The reflection looks pretty good. Thank you. I think I, I like it too. I was just trying to see if I could experiment with something to make it look like a little bit of lens glare. Um, so. There were, there's a couple of the lenses too, like in the front of the legs here. I still have to install these. There's a blue and a red lens that has to go in here. I have not painted those yet. Those are a couple of things. I, those are like the little details I was talking about, the little things that I have to finish. Um, I've also got to paint this little insert in the arm. There's a, a little lens that goes, well, this is supposed to be black inside, and there's a little light, a piece that looks this represents a light. It goes inside, and then there's a clear lens that, that pops in over that. So those are the little things that I've got. To, other than that, everything is done. The head came out really, really nice. I painted the inside of the lens uh, a fluorescent green, and then I clear I used a clear green on the outside. And what's nice about the lens is it actually has a round circle embossed into it that looks like a camera. So I think the head came out really, really nice. And then, I'm, of course, this will be shadowed as well. Um, so I'm using primarily those screenshots to as reference to create the shadows. It bends so we'll be happy to see you. <laughs> sure, George. <laughs> yeah, I think that's why they did it. Uh, that's got to be. It's got to be why they did it. <laughs> so on this back portion here, I, I drew a pencil line. Uh, when I I just kind of popped the two pieces together, and I drew a pencil line, so I knew where uh, my shadows needed to start and end, and then I just kind of freehanded it from there. So George says, "What you doing?" Uh, another thing that I got, and I and this is part one of two that I have coming. I've got some slaps coming, but I did have some cards made. Finally, I don't know why I didn't so long to do this, but I used my original cover art image. Um, Let's see if I can get there. We go. Focus. And that's my intro. I always say it's Mikey Wine, aka Gundam Morning Works. That's me. And then on the back, I got all my, um, all of my social media websites on there. And then I've also got some slaps coming with one of my an old image that actually a friend. I had a guy actually uh, draw an image of. Let's see if I've got it here. Where is it going to be? Uh, it's going to be on my screenshots, I think. Yeah. So uh, I built the Sosby Verka years ago. And then a friend of mine 
a friend in the in the, in the uh, industry. Actually, I haven't met him in person, but he did it. He does this kind of chibi uh, artwork, and he drew this for me. So I decided, what better image to use as a as a sticker? So I'm having 50 of these made. Um, <laughs> these business cards are so professional. Yeah, well. It's it'd be nice to especially next week, not this weekend, but next weekend is um, IPMS Seattle Spring Show. So next week will be just a preview, and we'll talk about what I'm going to be taking to the show and entering. I'm entering four kits. Uh, there will be the Super Jerry, that Machine Krieger, and then the Macross Full Resin Tomahawk 148. Also, the 135 Abrams tank will be going. And what else? I'm missing one. I always miss one here. What am I missing? Um, oh, and the Quinlan Row, of course. I'm going to be taking that. <clears throat> Who knows? I may even be done enough with this to take this one as well. Maybe stand them side by side, but uh, no promises there. I, if if I get it done, I get it done. I'm not going to worry about it. So, um, those are the four that I'll be taking. I'll, I know we'll talk about those and and do some show and tell as well and kind of recap those those last four builds that i've done um, that's pretty much the last four that i've done and so anyway i'm going to open my phone again i'm going to le uh, start looking at these uh, uh sell the screenshots that i took and maybe start drawing in what i'm trying to figure out if i really need to do any more and this is one of the reasons why i like not having this fully assembled because you can see like how hard it would be to get those pins into these little nooks and stuff. So as long as I can tell where the shadowing should be. And another thing I've got to do, I've got to see if this red, I've got a red pin, but it's, it's not very small. I don't think I have a small one. I, I bought some five mil and three mil pins. Let's see what I've got here. This is a mixture of everything that I bought. See, yeah, see, I've got, this one, but that's a five mil. <clears throat> Painting uh, MG Barbatos. Nice. You, you got to give a live stream peeps first dibs on the slaps. Yeah, that is true. I, um, I've already had some requests for them. People have said they want them. So, yeah. Ooh, here we go. So, I do have a three mil. Um, that's at least a finer tip. I don't have the one mill but that because you have to order those like separate for some reason you get these sets they don't come with different size uh so here's the here's the deal let me see maybe i can try to see if that red is a darker red i may have to use a brown on the red logos if i'm doing any shadowing especially like here because this is going to be under the body so this is going to be shadowed a little bit. So I'm going to have to uh, see if this red pen is dark enough to work as a shadow, you know, and not just blend in. Another cool thing that I just discovered by accident last night is that these pens will come off with uh, enamel thinner. So yeah, I got. Uh, let's see what's what's G1 saying here. I got a new display markers. These are pretty solid so far. Just for detail touch-ups. Oh, yeah, for like panel lining and stuff like that. Is that what you mean? Not not like what I'm doing, but it's probably too fine. I've actually bought some fine tip markers too for, you know, this kind of stuff to do the, the redrawing the panel lines if I need to uh, while I'm doing these uh, the cell shading stuff. But uh, I don't have any of the, the display ones. Speaking of display, uh, anybody see that new chopper? That's pretty darn cool. Got me thinking about it. Although my Chopper 2 works pretty good, I do like the versatility of their design. I might have to, might have to just pull the trigger on that one. Bite the bullet and, and buy one. But we'll see. So I'm going to pop this red pen up and, and just check what, on this logo real quick. Just to see, I do have a, a three mil dark brown that I can use if, or even a light brown that might work as well. 
Get the chopper. Get to the chopper. Just do it. Quit screwing around, right? That's what we're going to say next. Listen to me. You need to spend your money. You need to spend it on the, the best tools possible. You get what you pay for. Right, George? Sometimes you get what you pay for. Hmm. I don't know. This is uh, pretty bright red. So let me cap this for a second. I got to get my magnifiers on here. Just order the new cutter myself. Oh, oh from RP? Oh, so you got the new uh, the new display one from RP or something different, George? <laughs> it's Arnold time. It's terrible time. Okay. So I'm going to do a little, little experiment here just to see what this looks like. And realistically, it's exactly the same color. I mean, I, I put a little dab on there. It'll dry flat here in a second. But, I mean, you can't even... You can see the gloss where I put it on the logo. You see the little next to the kite. It, once it dries, it'll be flat, but it's there's no change. So, so this isn't going to work for shadowing on the red. So let's see. Let me pull up the box here that I've got. Actually, I do have a light brown. So I do have a, a three mil light brown. Okay, here's here's the difference. Let me bring up the dark. Okay, so so light brown, dark brown. Um, I'm going to try this light brown or, and see, because I don't want to go too dark, but I think, oh, shit, see, I don't know if that's going to work. I don't know if dry. But remember what I said, these will come off with enamel thinner. And I figured that out because was, I was trying to do those lenses and that the first orange I used was just too, uh, too close to the lens color. You couldn't even really see it. It was kind of like the way this red is reacting. RP makes their own, which, uh, oh, okay, nice. Everybody likes Suge Bordo. So anyway, if you make a mistake, you can take it off with, uh, I'm, I'm using AK odorless enamel thinner, but I'm sure any enamel thinner would work. And it's kind of cool, too, because check this out. I was just thinking about this. I'm like, maybe I shouldn't have put these stripes on, because if I'm doing shadowing and stuff, there's, there's going to be no way for me to not get paint onto these black you know decals and i'll have to redraw them or whatever but if i need to since i can use a q-tip like this i can do my shadowing try to eliminate as try to get as little as you know possible blemish on the stripe because i still want those stripes to be black obviously they're going to be darker than any of the colors on the shadows on there um but if i need to i can take a q-tip like that and just go across it and and completely touch up that line without taking off the rest of the, of the paint. <clears throat> so that's my my story, and I'm sticking to it. All right, so we're going to use this brown. Tom's in. What's up, Tom? How you doing, big guy? Cheers, everybody. Uh, Ambassador, this is uh, 2020 Grenache tonight. From Ambassador Wines of Washington. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Okay, now that's that's a contrast, but it's too light. It almost looks like it's not a shadow. So I may have to use the dark brown, like I said, which I don't have a fine tip for. I mean, I love the fact that I can take this off with enamel thinner. I mean, that's just that's a lifesaver right there. It really makes me feel better about using these because you now know that you, if you do make a mistake, you can go right back and get it. I, would, I wouldn't try taking it off after it's dry. I mean, I would say if you make a mistake, stop what you're doing, grab that, uh, that thinner in the Q-tip, and just remove it. And that's what I did. I mean, I put a little bit of that brown on there. You cannot even see it. It's gone completely clear. So that one's not going to work. So let's go to... Dark brown. Gosh, I wish I had this in a 3 mil. I may just have to wait on this and order that. But I, for the sake of argument here, I'm trying to find a, a color. Now you can see, well, you can't see because I'm off camera here. But I'm using this as like a to make sure I've got good saturation of the tip. Because these tips come in dry. You have to shake the pen and you got to press down on them and, and to get the paint to come out. So... But this brown, this dark brown is pretty dark. It almost looks black on, on camera, but it's dark brown. So 
I'm just going to try to get a little, I'm trying to take most of that paint off. I just want to see if this is going to work as a shadow on the red. And it just, it just might be okay. It does look black, but there is a difference. And if I use it primarily with a combination of the gray, I might be able to, uh, some of that's rubbing off. That's that's from inserting that in the model. I'm going to take this off, though, real quick, because I don't want it to dry. But I may have to order a 3 mil just to... Uh, i got to get some oh, shit. i got to get some more thinner here. I'm trying to find... I, I was looking for a 3 mil. I found a 3 mil in the brown. I want to see if I can get a a three mil and a one. The one mil is the really fine tip. Damn. Yeah, you definitely don't want to let this dry. Especially because this is on it's on flat paint. So the, there's there's a little bit of texture, you know, micro texture there. There we go. Got enough of it off. The the white is not my concern. I can I can use you know regular gray and stuff to get the cover that up. It's one thing you can do with these is you can uh, paint over a mistake too. Uh, let's see what up, George. Hey Angel. Oh Angel's in the house. Didn't see you there for a second. Angel, good to see you. I just saw that. I almost missed it. Um, looks like a quick build. What are we talking about? Uh, my build right now. Or started at what are you what are you building, Tom? Did I miss that? Uh, or are you talking about what I'm building right now? Can you pull the pen tip out and add some color from the pen and change the shape? Uh, wait, what's that question? Let's see. Let me read this on camera here. Can you pull the tip, the pen tip out, and add some color from a different pen to change the shade of the red pen? Hmm. That the the tips are replaceable. The tips do come out. So that's an interesting question. I imagine these could mix like anything else. Hmm. Yeah, I could add some brown to that red to make it like a reddish brown, which would be a perfect shadow for a bright red color. That's interesting. I'm gonna have to see if I can do. I have. I have a light brown, let's see. I've got a light brown three mil. And I have, you know, if I screw up a tip, because I do have uh, one of the kits uh, or sets I bought came with like three of these extra tips, and they're about an inch long. But they, they're they double-sided, so you can flip them and use the other side if you have to. But um, there's not a lot of room there to, to get that in there. But... That's interesting. I wonder if I could do that. I'm gonna, I may have to try to make a mess and try that one of these days. But I see, I see where you're going with that. Maybe using a little bit of brown to make that red more of a shadow color than than the bright red, because the red pen that I have just it matched it so closely that you couldn't even tell. All right, so let's see where to start. Where to start? Let's see. Um, Let's get this off screen. No, what you're building. Oh, um, yeah, I guess it was relatively quick. Um, I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't do any pre-shading because I was going for, you know, a cell shaded look. So I wasn't worried about any pre-shading. I was, I was even hesitant to do the panel lining um, because a lot of that will get covered up with these, these paint pens. Um, but as it turns out, um, yeah, I did the panel lining, but that's it. And I only put on m most of the, um, most of the, the, the big markings. I didn't do all the little warning labels and, and stuff like that. Um, I think this is how this goes on. I'm trying, <laughs> oh, I was trying not to do that. Uh, but 
It's that time of year, right? Okay, let me check the uh, assembly here on the legs. I gotta see. So, okay, so that does go. Oh man, allergy season! Yay! So I'm pretty sure. Let's see, yeah, that's there. And that goes on the outside. Nope, I think I got it backwards. No, I don't know. Let me see. I'm going to find out right now. Uh, yeah. No, that's definitely not right. Okay, so I had it right the first time. Well, there we go. I actually, I can't tell now. I can't tell which fin I got. I'm trying to see. Okay, so if that's the front. All right. So I did. I did have it right. It just didn't seem like that fin wanted to sit in there correctly. But yeah, this is the way it goes. So this one goes on this side. Okay, that's better. There we go. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll pull these back out do whatever shadowing i'm going to do and then install it so that way i can have a more consistent uh, shadow effect for those uh for the cells cell shaded look all right i just need to figure out what's the next step here i think i don't know i now i'm curious about mixing colors but do i really want to go down that rabbit hole uh, I've also got to shadow this and then assemble this. I didn't put this half on to the backpack yet because I wanted to, and I shouldn't have actually installed this piece yet. I, I should have put shadowing on here first. I may have to take some, uh, let's see, this is supposed to go on right about here. Yeah, so I can. I can shadow the inside of that with some gray right now if I want to. Right, I think that's what I'll do. All right, so let's set this back piece aside. Oh boy, how'd that get all the way around? Get over there. Those wing pieces are really, one of them is really loose and the other one's not. I don't know why one side came out so. I need to get the one mil gray out as well, which I have where to go. Where's my one mil gray? Oh, I have it in my hand. That's it. This is the one mil. This, uh, this is the fine tip gray pen, but it was like really, really watery. Now it's nice. I had to just shake the shit out of it because it seemed like when I was trying to use it yesterday, it was just coming out. There was hardly any color to it. It was just, it wasn't even coloring up, covering up the paint. It was just really not very dark and it's still, still kind of opaque. So I may have to go over this a couple of times. And I'm going to try to get as much as I can in there. Where these shadows would be. I gotta be careful though. <clears throat> and I keep that enamel thinner on standby. Do I get anything on a piece I don't want it on? I want to make sure I remove it right away before it dries. All right. Let's get, get in there. Okay, I'm just, gonna, just kind of shadowing this area a little bit.
and then I'm going to go across, kind of give that a glare effect. And like the same over here. Actually, do that in a little bit of black. as well. What's up, Jason? What's going on? Uh, Try not to touch this very much. Using a little bit of that gray side by side on the black. I think I'm ready to uh, can put this uh, top piece on there. Glue it down. All right. Cement time. Some of the pegs on that, I mean, in fact, all of the pegs on this are really tight fit. So it's like you got to be, you either got to get them wet with glue or actually, let me pull that right back off. Oh, son of a bitch. I just fucking broke the wing off. God damn it. Okay. I got to re-glue that later. So, one of the things I did earlier, and this is something you didn't see, was this fin piece back here. And I, this is going to be, I can fix this. This isn't going to be an issue. But, um, this fin piece had two pins that went into, went through the back into this. And in my painting process, I managed to just snap both those pegs off. So, I actually drilled that, drilled them out, made them a little bit larger, and then reinstalled it, and it was fine. But in doing so, I might have made the integrity of this a little bit weaker. And so when I was trying to take that backpack back off, I ended up just popping this wing right off. So I'm just gonna glue it. Should I cast you? Should I cash checks sent to our address by a previous tenant? Oh, I'm not answering that at all. You do you. It's all right. I've been getting, uh, we've been getting mail from our previous owners of the house for two years now, and I can't get the post office to, to stop delivering the mail to. I keep telling them. In fact, one time they sent, a message going okay can you tell us who lives there just give us a list of who lives in your house i said fine so i sent him a list I said here's three people this is my daughter was here at the time i was like here are the people that live in this house and to this day i still get their mail so i'm gonna have to let set this aside and let it dry but i had to I had to re-glue that, that fin on. This this wing completely snapped right off, right in my hands here. But it has a decent enough base to stick to, so it's not going to be too big an issue here. I just need to get the right angle. 
as it sits up a little bit it doesn't sit down on the on the wings it kind of has a they're not flat they kind of have a, a wedge shaped them. you see how they're 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 not laying flat they're kind of wedged up i think it's a fishy thing because not only is it addressed here to the previous tenant but it's paid from paid from and to the tenant oh wow that is that does sound weird yeah, by all means, go ahead, cash that sucker. Yeah. We'll see what happens. No, I'd say run. That would be my my guess. Run. Get out of there. Okay, I'm going to set this aside. I've got some skewers here at the ready. I'm just going to grab. Let's see here. I can grab it here. This is going to go into the bag. Okay. I'm going to set that aside and let it dry. And it looks like I got the... Well, maybe not. i got to get the angle right. It's not totally flat, but it's not sticking up really. i got to get this angle on. There we go. Okay. I don't want to sit. Will it sit like this? Yeah, I suppose it will. All right, I'm going to set this back here. Rather than having it on a skewer, I can I can lean it down, and it looks like it's going to support that wing and let it dry in the spot I want it to. So we're going to leave it alone. The reason I pulled this back on was I just realized I did something I didn't. What I'm trying to avoid is. I'm trying to shadow this stuff as I build it so I don't have to try to get these pins in it. And by putting that on there, I was not going to be able to get any of this shaded. So I took it right back off before the glue dried. And that's part of this process is like planning, trying to figure out how to assemble some of this stuff without, um, you know, and make it a lot easier in the long run. $6,700. There you go. No, I've been getting bills in the mail. I just got a towing bill in the mail uh, from this guy's, uh, from the previous owner. It's like, man. Okay. Let's see if I've got a decent, okay. I'm trying to look at the feet here. There's not a whole lot I can do to the feet. But I'm looking at this screenshot I got so I can kind of see yeah okay they're just i'm just going to use black there's going to the feet are going to be pretty easy you see my dilemma though with with the shadowing because like look at the inside of the leg it almost looks like a, a really dark gray or a brown but you can still see the black lines and stuff and that's what i'm trying to i want to reproduce that if i go too dark then you just lose all those those other line details so i'll get it figured out one way or another, it'll be good. So I'm going to do, just do the, uh, I'm going to take my big fatty, but I don't know, I think I'll just use the three mo and do the feet. So the feet are just going to be, the feet go in, and see how deep they go into the leg here. And then I can kind of figure about how much shadow. So if, if I pop this in, so this is all going to be, I want to make sure all this is black and then the sides will probably be darker down below by where the thruster would be but the top is going to be all lit there's not going to be anything there except maybe some glare so as i uh do this in the black i should be able to let's see yeah just about not much about an eighth of an inch down so i can go in and just basically cover all this top area in black and then work my way down from there so i'm just going to take pin over all of this even though you're really not going to see much of this 
Let's see here. Yeah. Should go like. Right about there, and then all this will fill in. Okay, see that? It looks glossy now, but it'll dry flat. Okay, so if I place that, now you can kind of see where that's going to be. I can actually probably go a little bit more straight across here. There. Another thing I want to do is once I'm done with the shadows, then I want to take the, the edge of the pen and go across all the lines and redraw every single edge. And that further makes it look more in that anime scheme because it, it's like you're actually drawing, like almost, almost pencil drawing the... You know the, the the model basically the kit so it looks like it's been hand drawn so I'm gonna fill all this in with black all right and then the front as well so we'll go over the front and just make all this black uh, I can continue this line down once I figure out where I want my glare to be because the, the top's gonna have a little bit of of a glare line as we go, see, this is what I was talking about. Now I'm going to take go along this edge. Now that I've got my, my initial shadow on there, and I'll go down the edge and redraw even across this edge. Not a, th not a super thick line, but enough that you can see it more than just a panel line. One more line here. I'm trying not to get my fingers in it. All right. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see because the, the steel color is pretty dark. Now I want to add some some glare to the to the front of this. The sides are going to be a lot darker than just the top. I want the top to be mostly clear. So I'm going to come off of this shadow and just kind of come down in a diagonal here. Just kind of like, like that. That'll make it look like a glare. I can even do more more down here by where the foot the opening of the foot is and maybe even on this side too just kind of okay you see that Kind of hard to see because it's right now it's shining, but I gotta wait for it to dry, and then I can do the the back of the heel. So let me start over on the other side. So we went down about here. This is all black. Hola, is that M L? How, is this your initials? What's going on? ML. Welcome in. Nice to have you. I don't think you've been here before. If I do, if I, if you have, I don't remember. I apologize. So now I'm just recreating that, that shadow on the, on the other foot here. Hola. So, what's everybody building? Anything doing? Anybody doing anything exciting right now? Or just just like me rambling, just being a talking head. Oh, 
So filling in this, the shadow, the, the primary shadow on this foot. Okay. Now I'm going to go down and draw this line again. Uh, oh, Forest Ghost. Incognito. <laughs> Or is it, or it is Forrest Ghost and coming? All right. Well, good to have you. Why, why the, uh, why all the secrecy? I don't care. I'm just kidding. You do what you want. I do what I want. Oops, did I go across the front? I think I did. My other foot? I think I did. Yeah, I did. Okay. All right, so that's almost dry. Now I'm going to do this glare again on this foot, kind of similar to the other side. And just a little bit different. Kind of like that. Do that glare effect. Come down here as well on the side and the other side's probably dry now so i can grab it and do the, the heel the back of the foot on that other side now some of these parts especially particularly like the arms and stuff are going to be going to have to figure out which one's left and right because they're going to be in different positions so they're going to be shadowed completely different I still got a couple of spots that are showing up here. Let me touch up. Scrabbing and, and demi demi barding. Working on a teat bear guy. Nice. Silent dude four. What's going on, man? Good to see you. Tom, Tom, Tom. That's right. Force Ghost is Tom. All right, so for the back of the foot, very similar. A lot of this is going to be shadowed because it's in under the, the leg. So I'll go ahead and draw in the, the lines of the heel. And then I'll just fill in this shadowed area in black. I'm going to go along the, the bottom edges too, but I got to do that. What I'll do is I'll grab one of my little clips here. Uh, it'll be easier to hold on to because these, these parts are pretty small. And this, this ink is not, I say ink, but I mean paint, is not as durable as like the, as the uh, Mr. Color is. So the more you handle it, the more it does tend to come off if it'll start to come off. Hmm. Somebody saying something like they're talking to Force Ghost Mikey. Another Mike. Okay, so I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna finish off these since this really won't be seen that closely, but I want to make sure that it's dark because it should be shadowed. It's under the bottom edge of the foot area, so that should be in, in darkness, really, or shadow. So I'm just going to go down the insides of these edges. That technically can be seen, but not without effort. Okay. So again, I'm going to do a little bit of a glare on 
the sides, I guess, and the and the back here. All right, and then maybe maybe one on the inside. Okay, so that's starting to come together I like the way the shadowing looks. I may do more on the sides. I probably will do more on the sides um, just to further darken it up because in the in the cell that the sample or the example I'm looking at, the, a lot of the sides are almost completely shadowed. But this will be standing, you know, freestanding, but the, the leg... Let's see if I take the leg here. There's going to be a portion of this is going to be covered up in the leg. So that's why all the, the dark portions at the top. Okay, well, let's let that sit for a minute. And we'll do the heel on this other side. So again, I'm going to grab this with my clip here and start just filling in. Got enough of these pins, I might be able to actually take some to work. We're doing, don't need it as much as I used to, but a lot of doing engine rebuilds, a lot of times you got to mark, you got to mark stuff as you, you know, disassembling things. I, I usually mark things so I know where they go, go back together. You know, it makes it easier for, you don't have to be, you know, to remember, like, where did this, you know, where did this hose go? Where which which you know, part did it connect to? So when I whenever I think about those things, I usually mark it with a paint pen. But my pen is starting to run out of ink because it's so damn old. So I might need to actually sacrifice one of these in <laughs> one of the big ones that I'm not going to use for for models. I'm just taking the work. All right, so we'll do a little bit of glare back here. A little bit different than the other side. All right, we'll let that dry. Now, oh, Tom's out. Tom says gotta gotta get the car out of the dealer for maintenance. Oh, okay. Off to bed. All right. Good night. Sorry I missed out earlier. It was a couple minutes ago, but I had my head down. Okay. So this one is still drying. This one's pretty dry already. So now we can I'm trying to take a closer look at this. Here's the front. One side, the other side. I like the way the black looks against the... Uh, now this is steel that I've also flat coated, so it still has a little bit of that metallic look to it, but it's not glossy. And that's one thing these pens do not work on really well is a glossy surface. If you're going to do this, you've got to make sure it's flat coated because the, the pen, the, the paint just, I forgot to do the inside edges of this. The paint just um, will not stick. It kind of just bleeds a little bit and just moves around because it's just not, there's nothing for it to hold on to. So even the video that I watched 
watched a guy doing this. He said, he, he, you know, flat coat it first because it gives the pin something to grip. And, and, and he's right. Now, for the most part, you know, some of the paint, some of the paints we use, you could probably get away with putting it straight on. But I, I probably recommend doing a a flat coat first if you want this to really stick. All right, I'll let that dry for a second. Longer. Where are we at? We're at 7 p.m. So one of the things I'm going to really have to do is, is, is like I was talking about tracing the lines on, you know, going on all the edges to like a redrawing the piece. The arms especially are going to be like that. Every single one of these little facets is going to have a black line on it. So it's really going to uh, help with that effect. Um, I'm going to do the same with the chest piece too, you know, along these edges once I figure out where my shadows are going to be. I also got to figure out, you know, the blue. I think the, the dark blue that I have will work really, really well. I actually have two. I've got, I've got this color, this blue. This one I have not used, and this is just blue, and then there's navy blue. But I think navy blue is probably going to be my go-to, and that's the one I had used in the, the Quaylen Row as well for the shadowing of that to try to because I was looking straight off the the anime cell for that that color <clears throat> all right gosh where are we gonna go next let's see here I want to I want to put this on the leg just so I can fully see what it looks like now so we're gonna insert this on the poly cap okay so there we go Not too bad. I could probably go a little bit further down with the shadowing on the sides um, just because of the way the foot fits in the leg. You know, the, the further there will be some shadowing under these edges, these corners. So I might, yeah, I'm probably going to end up doing that. I got to lower, take it back out and lower those, uh, those lines. And plus, once I get this side, good to go then I'll make sure I'm taking this apart my oops I thought that would take the whole thing off but I was wrong I just took the front piece off so let's take this out okay there's so many poly caps on this piece all right so let's do that let's take a little bit more of this black Lower this down, bring that line down pretty close to to where it hits the side. You know, well, the side of the foot would be. And then you're going to have to seal this too. Once you're done putting these on, you're going to have to seriously going to have to. Uh, use some flat coat or even gloss and flat but just to protect this paint because it is not that that durable it's made for artwork and stuff it's not necessarily designed for this and a lot of these handling these parts is just going to rub it off you have to do a lot of touch-ups i found that out too when i was doing the quaylen row it's like anytime i would if i did a portion then i would try to re go back over that spot again yeah, I was just noticing it was getting little chips and stuff like that, so you have to make sure you seal it. Okay. All right. I think I want to... I think I want to assemble the arm at least one side, if not both. So I want to see where I've got to put the shadows. So if I'm not mistaken, actually, let me do this over here. I'm going to refer back to my instruction manual just because I'm going to turn the assembly knees in the right direction. So where's my arms? Oh, here we go. 
Let me see. that and like that this goes this looks like the long portion goes in so this goes up in here uh, I can hear somebody singing the national anthem you guys probably hear that too probably the local high school having a football game all right, so this goes on like so. This is going to be, and I don't have uh, the, the, the hand that holds the, uh, the gun pod, I don't have done yet because I have to assemble that around uh, I have to assemble it around the handle. Like if you look at this here. Here's the gun pod with the strap and everything on. I've got to build that hand around here. So, and then I've got a seam. There's a seam I'm going to have to fix. So I'm going to have to do some masking, other things like that. So that hand is still over on the paint booth. Um, as I was going to put the decal on, but I, I guess you probably do that last. But anyway, it's the reason is because it's got just the one yellow decal there that needs to go on it. But this is going to be you know, where, actually, I'm going to have to get it, because if I do this, I'm going to need to see the position of that. So I'm going to grab it real quick. I don't have, I don't have it glued together yet. And what I did when I, when I built the 120 Gerwak, I had the same issue. Where I had to build the hand around, but I, I figured out what I did was I cut the finger off. The trigger finger i cut it off um so i could and then i modified the inside of the hand so i could insert the handle into a, a completed hand that was already sealed and and seamed and everything like that so then all i had to do was uh i, I put a pin in this part of the hand with i mean this is obviously a lot smaller scale but what i did is i took the finger and i had a, I built a pin for it so then i put it in around the gun it just all i had to do was kind of just pin the finger in place and then it was done so i'm going to build this i'm just going to kind of assemble this so i can do the same thing with the arms and stuff so i can kind of see where the shadows i'm going to have to take this stuff apart several times to get the shadowing right but i need to put this on and assemble it so i can do the same so let's see, the arms go, yeah, that goes up, okay, so that goes in like so, goes in like so, yeah, that's the way that goes. Yeah, okay, and then that goes in this way, because these are directional, so, all right. Oh, yeah, all the way in. There we go. Okay. Right, so there we go. That goes like that. I think I had this. I might have even had this down. Yeah. Okay. So we gotta get this. There we go. Put that in. All right, so it's going to sit basically like this. I want the hand to kind of be like just kind of guiding. I can even bring this up further. I think that's how it's going to go. Bring this in like that. So the hands starting to separate on me. This is why I could just just build this and just deal with it. I gotta. I'm gonna have to mask off the 
or hand paint it once I sand the seam because there's these the way the fingers come together on this way they grip this uh, they're they're really it's really a poor mold as far as the, the other two hands are great but this came with because it came with basically two two left arms for different styles you know for holding the the gun pod but um, the one that I need that's the one that I'm using it anyway way better than the one that actually holds it because it's just it's got a horrible seam on it it's really not well done all right so that's gonna go there let's see I gotta look at my now I gotta look at my screenshot this is gonna take a bit Sorry, I'm trying not to be boring here, but so this is kind of what I'm looking at. So if you look at the positioning here, and then the positioning here, whoops. So this will go like that. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if we get this in frame. So there we go. Pretty close. Right, that's what I'm working at. So it looks like most of the chest is is lit up. There's a little bit of shadowing on the left side, and then if you look at the arm, the left arm. It's mostly all around the back of it. The top of the arm is all lit. Uh, and then the forearm here has just a couple of glare lines, really. Not a lot of shadowing here. The, the right arm that holds the gun pod, that one's a little bit more shaded. All right. So. Okay. Let's see here. Bring that one down. That's kind of like, let me see. Yeah, that's pretty close. It's just kind of like right about there, right in the front of the chest. Pretty darn close. Okay. So you see what I'm talking about? You see how this, the line, the actual line drawn so what i'm going to do is go across each one of these ridges you know any one of these and with a black line and actually draw that in so those lines will be they'll look much more anime-ish and then you see the oops I'm gonna stop the black portion that's in the front of the forearm here with that little light is that i still got to paint and put those lenses in um, but it's well, the nice part about it is I'll be able to put a glare line on those two because those aren't colored, they're just clear. So I can use a white pen and put like a a glare line across those lenses as well. But then I can kind of see where my shadowing will go. It'll 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 be lit up here on the top, but not so much underneath the arm here. So the shadow is going to kind of go going to go down just to left of center and then across the the chest piece but uh, most of the white will, you know is down here it's actually just the, the black and the blue area that's going to be shadowed but i think that navy blue is going to look really nice as a darker blue color but it's still blue you know not not using just black across the whole thing that'll work and then of course i'll shadow the, almost the whole entire side of the inside edge of the gun pod here. Got a little touch up to do on the decal that came off on that one. No big deals there. It's easily easily fixed. There's a couple of them that have little chips like that. I don't know why these decals are so fragile. I mean Hasegawa lately, like the last two kits I've built have been really fragile as far as decals. That's kind of surprising, but so I still should be able to open well, the way I did these shoulder modifications. So now I can open the wings up. Yeah, those will be those will be fine. 
I just don't want to glue this on there yet until I know I've got all my shadowing done. All right, so that goes there. The cockpit portion here, okay, it looks like there's the skull and crossbones. You can just see it under the arm there, but it looks like most of the shadowing comes across the top of the nose here. And then this side is is lit until it probably gets under here. Hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. But I'm going to have to order a pen for that because I don't have the, the brown like I was saying earlier. So that's not going to work out. All right. <sighs> Fun, fun, fun. Oh, I have silver bits floating in my glass. What the heck is that? I don't know what it is. I don't want to drink it. All right. Let's see what else I can do here. Okay. Going back to the feet. So now that I darkened those areas in, let me put this one back in so you can see that again. Okay, that's better. So now, you know, the shadowing is all the way down in front of the foot. It's actually a little bit closer to where it should be. Still might want to dress up this corner a little bit. I think I'm going to, like right here. Because there's a another hinged piece here, this actually might have its own shadow. So by changing that, there, that looks a little nicer. I can do the same on this side because that's actually going to be. just under the shadow of the, the, the top piece of the foot. Okay. All right, now, this is the left leg. So, now one of the tricky parts to the legs here is this knee joint, okay? So, the knee joint pops in, you have to put this piece in first, and then there is another piece that goes on the front, and that's like the, the front of the kneecap here. But you can't install this until after you put this in. So that's the only really tricky part to this knee is I'm gonna, I've gotta do the shadowing on this first, pop it in, do the shadowing on this kneecap, and then pop that on the front. Once it's on, once it's glued in, there's no taking it apart because this wraps around, basically wraps around the poly cap, covers it up kind of like that. So you can't physically take it back off once you install it. You have to you have to put this piece in first. And really, just push this down on there, and it's pushing all the paint off. But once you get that all the way down, then. Pretty sure that's the way it goes. Yeah, it has to be. Because that's the that's the piece where this this knee goes on. So yeah, so it goes goes down here first. There we go. Down like that. And then you take this and like it's inserted like that. So it actually seals off the knee really nice. It actually finishes the knee really nicely. It looks good. That's a nice design as far as the way Hasegawa did that. Um, and then we've got the, oops, that would be this one. No, I had the right one the first time. So this one here. Uh, no, actually, no, I did not. Okay, so this one here, this then goes on here. And then we've got the top. 
piece here, which is this side, which goes on like so. So quite a few pieces to to get right, but a, quite a few that I've got to sit down and really just focus on where those shadows are going to go, where where I'm going to put those that paint, and I'm going to keep that. <laughs> Especially with these nice black stripes, I'm going to keep that uh, email or you know that enamel thinner at the ready because that's going to have to be used, I think, quite a bit to keep these uh, stripes nice and clean until I can uh, seal it all. And stuff just the stuff just rubs off. You have to really. Be careful while you're handling it. That's why I don't want to take it apart and put it together too many times, but it's necessary part of the process because I can't choo choo. What does that mean, Julius? <laughs> All right, let's take this apart nice and carefully. Gosh. Everything fits so tightly on these, I tell you. It's, it's actually scary sometimes when you're trying to take this stuff apart because it's just like, oh, my God. You feel like it's going to break. That's what that's what scares me. All right. Okay, so we're at 7, a little 722. We're almost ready to... Call it. I know we didn't get a lot done tonight, a lot less than I thought I was going to, but I had to do a repair on this, and it's actually looks really nice. It's glued in the right position. So let me see, make sure this goes on correctly here. This will go on here when it's done. Yeah, it looks good. I haven't, I'm not going to fully press it down, but looks like I fixed that wing okay it's it's it dried in the correct position so we should be good to go thankfully it didn't uh, it broke pretty clean right across where that uh, those two pins came through all right I know what I can do for the time being I can assemble micro missile pods because again these are all things I had to do like literally separate pieces and now I, now I can finally glue them together now that everything is painted but I can't pick these up because they're too smooth and they're on the tweezers which are right here all right there's one two three and four so let me assemble these real quick so let me get my glue out all right so these do have these are uh directional there is a notch that these fit in but first these go in here They're, these don't have a any particular position Oh, what is that? Oh, it's just a some flash. Okay. So these go into the, the, the missile tips here, go into the, the head of this. But then there's a position that this has to go on. In fact, I, I might just do that. I guess I don't have to. But anyway, that will then fit. It's keyed, so it has to go one direction, but that will fit just like that. I think I know the reason why is because these have to be angled. There, there's some panel lining on the front of these, and if they're not installed correctly, they will be facing the wrong direction. So I'm just going to glue these in real quick. Just a dot here and there on all four corners, these edges that touch the. And this, and then I can pop it on to the top and run a bead around the edge. OK. 
I don't want to press down on the front of this because I'll just push those muscles right back out. Actually, I don't think they will come out now that it's on, sitting on here, but I just want to run some glue all the way around the edge like this. <clears throat> all right. Yeah, then these will be ready to... Uh, the color and I'm just going to be using black on those to, to shadow them because they're it's such a darker color anyway I don't really have any other color that's going to be contrast enough to even use as a shadow but even looking at the cell the original anime cell it's it's black so that's what we'll use I'm just going to glue these into the caps first and then I'll install them. We'll call it a day. So I think the cell shading, I'm being a little more conscientious about the, the shading, making sure on this one is in particular that the row was pretty easily because, or pretty easy, or a little easier because of the fact that it's just really all just one color and it's a lot of smooth surfaces is not i don't know maybe just even though it's the same scale it's just just that much bigger of a kit anyway just because of the it'd be interesting to see these side by side when they're done you know, both at 172. And I did order the Max version. I know, I know. I wasn't going to do another one, but I actually ordered another Max and another Myria version of the Quaylen Row. Because I had this silly idea of doing a dirty dancing scene with Max holding her up over, over his head. It was actually my wife's idea. So I thought, oh, we got to do it. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do with that. All right. Two down, two to go. Once I get a little glue on one side, it'll hold, it'll stay in place, and then I can just go around the entire perimeter of this. There's three, one more. That's perfect timing, too. All right. Oops. I hate when I do that. When I get so focused on what I'm doing, I forget that I'm not exactly on camera. Even though that's keyed, there's a notch there. It's not exactly, it doesn't fully center that piece. You have to make sure you glue it in the right spot. Okay. So those are, I'll leave those to dry. <sighs> okay, boys and girls, guess what time it is, I know. Sad to say. But it's time to go. Thank you again, each and every one of you that has come in tonight and joined me and had fun sitting here trying to plan this out and do these uh, do this cell shading. Next week, uh, like I said, will be uh, a preview for the uh, Seattle Spring Show. So I'm not sure how much work will be done on the bench as far as this kit if it's not done before that. I don't. 
I don't think it will be, to be quite honest. There's, there's a lot of work that has to actually be done with the cell shedding and sealing everything and making sure that it's, uh, it looks good. So I'm not going to stress about getting this one done by not this Saturday, but the 27th. So uh, next week will just be, we'll be sharing, we'll be talking about what kits I'm going to enter and, and then we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, great show. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome, Julius. Thank you for coming in. I appreciate it. Hit the thumbs up. Yes, please. I, <laughs> I always forget to say that, but I, I do appreciate you guys supporting me um, and helping me keep this thing going. Um, yeah, tell your friends, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, um, uh, visit the Amazon store if you want to, if you want to find some stuff that, uh, uh, some, a lot of the tools and stuff that I use. Um, parting is such sweet sorrow, George. I know. Have a good one, Mike. Yeah, you too, George. Uh, see you. I'll, I'll be watching your show tomorrow morning as usual on my way to work. I usually play it while I'm, while I'm driving in. Some, uh, good, uh, Good entertaining times too. Watching you do your tank and the uh, the GM cannon uh, side by side right now. So anyway, uh, we'll see where we get um, before next week. And uh, I'll if I do, maybe I can do an update too uh, next week on this one. Uh, but I don't know how much work we'll be doing during the broadcast. It'll be more just talking about the show and uh, discussing the entries and and stuff like that and then and then we'll go from there so anyway thanks again everybody be good humans we'll talk to you soon we'll see you next time and away